children i am dr aruna mohan from delhi university discussing with you in this session disorders of digestive system though our body is a wonderful machine and it is self maintained to some extent but if body parts are there then disorders may also be there it may be naturally coming to different parts or it may be due to our carelessness sometimes the first disorder which i may like to discuss with you is inflammation of intestinal tract we know that our intestinal tract is very long we call it git gastro intestinal tract starting from mouth ending at anus it is a long path to go so on the way inflammation or some disorder may occur at some or the other point the reasons may be bacteria infection or viral infection or even some big parasites in the intestine if it is bacterial or viral infection it will give certain indications certain problems but if it is parasite a good sized parasite then the indications come little later and treatment also go very long time these parasites can be tapeworm roundworm threadworm hookworm pinworm and many more which can be seen by even naked eyes in this slide children you can see tapeworm roundworm hookworm pinworm you have heard about tapeworm the scientific name is tenia solium it is really very long if it enters the alimentary canal then it will grow it will have so many segments called proglottids and each segment is a full animal and once it is in the alimentary tract the segments break come out one by one through feces and they are the cause for infection further to other individuals you may also like to know children how one can get this tape worm inside the alimentary canal it normally comes through pork because pig is the intermediate host for this particular parasite this means this parasite has two hosts one is pig and other is man so it will complete its life cycle in pig and then along with the pork if not properly cooked it reaches our intestine and once it reaches the intestine its mouth has hooks and suckers with which it makes very firm contact with the internal lining of the alimentary canal and lives happily there food which we eat becomes his food as well of course the person having this tape worm inside will have nausea will have vomiting will suffer several problems but unless this tape worm is removed he will not be cured so eating pork one should make sure that it is cooked at very high temperature it should not be partially cooked and should not be less cooked than required so this is about the tape worm coming to round worm as the name indicates they are roundish they are not flat like tape worm and they are also very long the scientific name is ascaris lumbricoides and male is smaller than the female in size and it also gives various symptoms when it is in the alimentary canal in case of tape worm you may have one big tape worm in the body but in case of round worms you will have hundreds of them and when medication is given then they come out along with your feces in clusters in hundreds in thousands so there are so many and they are eating away all the food which you are eating for yourself similarly pinworms hookworms and threadworms are equally injurious and most of them of course reach through our food 
but some can reach even through our soles or feet. When one is walking without slippers on the moist ground or on the grass and if some of these are there, they may make their way through feet. That happens normally in villages, in uh, gardens, in fields, etc. Then in that case, they will enter the feet. You can see them on the feet, under the skin. They will go through thigh, reach the abdominal part and go to different parts of the body and settle and sometimes they are coming out through eyes, coming out through nose, making a small hole in the finger, coming out through fingers. So things become so very difficult. So children, what do we learn from this? We should wash our hands properly before we eat food because some of these worms in the form of eggs can be on our hands and more than that, we should wash any fruit on vegetable before we consume it. Also, we should keep our food covered. We should preserve our food properly. And when we are walking outside the house, we should have some good footwear so that things do not affect our body through our feet. Unless we are careful, these parasites are going to affect us badly. Parasite is after all a parasite. It needs a host. And if we are the host for these parasites, they will definitely try to come on us. And it is our duty to see to it that they are not coming on us. And these parasites, when they enter elementary canal, they become parasites of our GIT, elementary tract, gastro elementary tract. Let us now discuss about some other ailments of elementary tract. And the first and the most important one is jaundice. In this, liver is badly affected. Skin and eyes turn yellow. Why? Because bile pigments are deposited in various parts of the body. And that is why the cloth which one wears in case of jaundice will also become yellowish. It is because of bile pigment. Why it is happening? Because liver is not functioning properly. Children, you must remember that liver is the most important and the largest gland in our body. It is taking care of so many things in the body. All the metabolisms are taking place through liver. It is highly vascularized, highly supplied by blood and hence any infection your body has will definitely reach liver. And if it is an infection which affects liver, liver will be affected. And if liver becomes sick, then the first thing is one has jaundice. And now this jaundice is not the case of one or two days. It takes long time to be cured. One thing. Second thing, once it is cured, the person has to take care for another six months that liver becomes healthy and one is not putting on weight because that is a tendency after liver infection. So jaundice which comes through water medium, we should be careful that water which we drink is correct and the things which we eat through water are also correct like you are having some juices outside the house or having some ice cream from market. If ice cream is not stored properly, then also there are chances when one may get these germs of jaundice through badly stored ice cream. So children, you must appreciate the fact that whatever we eat outside the house, we have to be very calculative to find out whether we should take it or we should not or we should take things only from the correct places. Next disorder I would like to discuss about vomiting. Children, you all are very familiar with vomiting. Sometimes or other we do it. It is ejection of stomach content through mouth. Why? Because vomiting center in medulla is stimulated. It is reflex action which is controlled by a vomiting center in medulla and it initiates with nausea before vomiting. Children, you must have realized sometimes when you feel like vomiting, you won't start vomiting immediately. First you will feel difficult, then you will feel nauseatic, 
then you will feel that you are having hunger for oxygen then you will feel that you are not feeling like eating you are uh, feeling against food and after having all these feelings you will go and vomit so vomiting is a process which takes little longer to come and once it comes then you are vomiting the content of the stomach so first thing you must realize that vomiting doesn't come out just as simple as throwing out stomach content it starts from brain from medulla part of the brain then reflex action coming to stomach then feeling of giving out or throwing out and then you are throwing out the stomach content so you are doing something which is against the normal process the normal process is you eat food it goes down to stomach and vomiting is from stomach you are throwing things out so this vomiting is the indication either there is some infection in your stomach or in the intestine or you have overeaten or the food which you ate was not compatible with your body nature or it was very spicy or it was wrong kind of food mainly it happens if it is infected food this is one part of vomiting which you must understand the second part is when you are vomiting only contents from stomach are coming out maximum from small intestine the initial part the content will come out never the content of rectum or large intestine will come out through mouth because there is a wall between small intestine and the large intestine which will not allow content of large intestine to come out through mouth those contents of large intestine will come out only through anus is it not a very good arrangement so we don't get that bad feeling that uh, some bad thing is coming out through mouth we know the food which we have eaten is coming out through mouth and that is about vomiting diarrhea is another disorder of our alimentary tract in this there is abnormal frequency of bowel movement increased liquidity of fecal discharge and reduction of absorption of food what do we understand from this if there is abnormal frequency of fecal movement that means if we are going to toilet once or twice a day in place of that we are visiting toilet 10 times a day that means we have diarrhea that will also mean that our fecal matter is dilute that means we are losing water and that also means that reabsorption or absorption of food in the small intestine will be less because we are throwing it in a diluted form so we are eating food we are digesting it to some extent we are not able to absorb it fully and before that we are throwing it out we are throwing more water out also that means we will have shortage of water in the body shortage of digested food or absorbed food so if we are suffering from diarrhea two things will definitely happen first thing we will feel weak why because we are eating food we are not able to absorb it and other thing which will happen we will feel dehydrated because we are throwing more water through fecal matter so diarrhea is injurious and that is why it is advised that if child has diarrhea give him more of water more of electrolytes in the form of sugar and salt or give a solution of sugar and salt so that person is not suffering of dehydration and not suffering of electrolyte deficiency and the disorder which i may like to discuss is constipation it is opposite of diarrhea when bowel movements are slowed and irregular so feces remains for longer time in the rectum so more water and electrolytes are absorbed and hence feces becomes very hard and when we give out hard feces it is constipation last point in this session is indigestion where is food is not properly digested the reasons may be several like inadequate enzymes the enzymes are not produced properly or there is food poisoning or we have eaten more than required or food is very spicy or the food doesn't suit the body properly 
whatever the case may be if there is indigestion one will feel difficult digestion will not take place hence absorption will not take place hence assimilation will not take place so final thing will be that what food we have eaten is not utilized by the body so we should be careful we should not pass through indigestion condition so in this session we have discussed about disorders of elementary canal and with this we come to the end of the session thank you Thank you.